What's up guys, this is Charles, I'm a compiler engineer from Softgo, and I'm also one of developers of TPU MLIR, which is a new open source AI compiler developed based on MLIR, multi-label intermediate representation. So this is gonna be a series of videos for introducing TPU MLIR, as well as related knowledge such as neural network deployment. Hope it will be helpful for some of you interested in this field. So in the first video, we're going to talk about what is AI compiler. Many of you may be more familiar with the traditional compiler, which transforms high-level programming languages such as CPP, Python, or Java to a low-level one. That's understandable for our CPU or operating systems. And actually, AI compiler works in a similar way. But the source part here is a deep neural network developed by different deep learning frameworks, such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Cafe. And our target is getting a binary model, which can be sort of as another kind of neural network. It is runnable on a certain hardware. So the main difference between traditional and AI compiler here is for the traditional one, what we want is creating an executable program. Of course, to make the deep neural network runnable on a hardware is also one important task for AI compiler. But our main task here is doing a prediction acceleration. Here we come to the second question. When do we need AI compiler? We know with the fast development of deep learning, neural network goes deeper and deeper for improving their performance in some complicated situations, such as object detection. So usually we will get a single model with huge amount of parameters that requires a pretty high computational expense. In addition, in some real-time scenarios, such as autonomous driving, we may hope our model to do the prediction work as fast as possible. Nobody will want a car that needs two or three seconds to detect what exactly in front of it. That would be too late to react. So CPU doesn't seem to be strong enough to do the job here. By this point, maybe some of you will ask, why don't you just use GPU? In some deep learning frameworks, we only need a single line of code to send our model to CUDA, then we can accelerate it by GPU. Of course, GPU can be one of the choices, which integrates thousands or millions of cores into a single processor. Then we can do the acceleration work by parallel computation. It's just like we break a complete task into thousands of simple tasks, then we can do all of them at the same time. But GPU is generally designed for graphical process. That means it's not only for deep learning. So if we only want to do neural network prediction, maybe we can get something better. Or maybe we can say we can get something more professional. That's why we need the TPU here, which is specially designed for neural network. That's because it supports tensor-based computation. And we all know that a neural network is entirely composed of a set of tensor operations. So here we got another question. How can we run a neural network on TPU? Yeah, that's a short time of AI compiler. So from this slide, we can learn how AI compiler works. In the first step, we will convert the original model to intermediate representation, which we call EIR usually. And it can be sort of as another kind of model, just like Onyx. And in the next step, we will do code gen based on the IR for generating a code for specific hardware. But of course, the work of AI compiler can be less like simple. Yeah, I hope we can. The first reason is it's very unpractical to directly jump from the original model to target code by a single layer of IR. It's just too difficult to implement. And the second reason is if we want to support a new hardware, we have to redo all of this work. That means we have to rebuild a complete AI compiler and that's too much effort. 
So normally there are several layers of IR in the middle state, and we will do the transformation and optimization work step by step. In the first few layers of IR, the transformation and optimization would be hardware independent. And in the later part, we will do the transformation work according to the design of a certain hardware. Then at some point, we can do the code gen based on the last layer of IR. Okay, let's all contend for today. If I didn't express anything clearly, you can leave me a comment below, and I will try to reply you as soon as possible. If you like this video, please don't forget to thumbs up, and of course, with subscription would be better. So, thanks for your attention. See you in the next video.